for joining me here. This is Plumber Tom. I want to talk about what do you do when you have a toilet that's loose, wiggles. A toilet that moves is a toilet that leaks, and when they leak into a subfloor, a wood structure, it makes a lot of mess, causes a lot of damage, and it's really unsafe. So in this video, we're going to look at the replacement of flooring and subfloor. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly how to do flooring. I mean, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there for that. What I want to examine together is the process of getting that floor to a state that you can put a toilet on it and know that it's not going to leak in the future. Now that I've removed the toilet, you can see the extent of the water damage below the floor from that leaking toilet flange. This flooring has two layers of subfloor below the flooring. One is a particle board and then below that we get to a plywood. You can see the particle board just crumbles right out because of the water damage. And you can see this has leaked quite a bit, discoloring the wood and the subfloor that plywood down below. My goal here is to clear out as much as possible to the extent where I, I can trust we're, we're down to a solid flooring. That's something that I can set the toilet on and it's not gonna move. And so now I'm chopping into that plywood subfloor as I stepped on that and pushed around it, it had some give. It would flex a little bit, and that's not what we want for a toilet. Once I got that plywood subfloor removed, I was examining closely the joists below. Now, if there's damage, you're going to see water. This joist looks really good. That wood is pretty clean. Uh, but what we're looking for is water damage. You can see traces of water on this other side. If it were black or moldy, if it looked like that joist had started to corrode, we'd have to do more structural work. But in this case, those are still in pretty good shape, so we can kind of move on from there. As I continue to clear out the floor, you can see the extent of the water damage. The coloring is really obvious. But some of this subfloor is still pretty solid, at least when I'm stepping on it, it doesn't move. So I didn't feel like I needed to clear out all of that second layer of subfloor from the entire room. Now I'm just clearing the pipe out of the way and replacing. I can't use that flange anymore. So I had to cut it down enough to where I can replace that ABS plastic pipe. I put a coupling on and a flange. I uh, used this OD ABS cement. Now make sure that you're using ABS, that's the black plastic glue for ABS pipe. Or if you're using PVC, use PVC glue. They are specific to that and a transition glue that's supposed to be good for either one is not really that great of an option for either because it's just not and actually it's not allowed by code so I'm working this back together I'm gonna to cut this piece to where it's just up to the subfloor levels but I'm not gonna glue the flange on just yet because I need to rework all of that subfloor on top of it I'm just kind of fitting it here making sure it's gonna work it looks good so at this point my pipe is okay. I keep putting these uh, plastic bags in because I don't like getting sewer gas smell in my face. But now it's time to rebuild some of this wood. I had some leftover treated lumber from another project, so I was using that, but you could use regular 2x4s down below there or whatever. The goal here is I'm just trying to create something to, to secure this replacement piece to. So I'm attaching that to those joists, and that'll give me some structural support below this replaced subfloor. So I've gone and cut my replacement piece. This is a half inch thick piece of wafer board and you can see I didn't even measure. I just kind of lined it up with where that pipe is going to be. Drill it out, make sure it fits. I had to take it back outside and trim it in a little bit just to make sure it would fit snug but once it's down uh, it fit really nicely with that subfloor level, that plywood below. Now I had to make sure that I was also using the correct widths. So this structural subfloor was a little bit thinner than that subfloor that's up above it. So I ended up buying several different sheets to just to try and get my levels the same for the next layer of flooring. So now I'm measuring that overall subfloor. I went out and cut it. I had to put a seam in right by the uh, toilet there because I could. I tried to get the whole sheet in at once. I ended up scratching the walls a little bit and you can see there's that water supply. I couldn't get it around that. So I cut the seam right where that toilet and that vent are going to be. And that way it's not something that's going to be walked on. It's kind of out of the way and I can secure those two pieces together. 
So at this point I'm going back through that entire second layer of subfloor and just securing it down with screws wherever I have seams and wherever I can sinking that down into the joists below. And once that's secured I can glue on the toilet flange. So I've just glued that in place and it worked out great with the elevation. I'm just double checking my distance from the wall for my flange bolts and then securing it down with brass screws as required by code. From there I just glued down a piece of vinyl flooring, put the trim back on around, and there's a lot of different flooring options you could do, but the toilet flange turned out well. The important thing is that that flooring is totally solid secure. I set the toilet, there's no more wiggle, and no more leak.